He goes mad for those ads. He's got a Trailer Jones. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Trailer Jones. This month, I got your friends, I heard. You, you get along? Sometimes. Are yeah. you going to get along today when we, it's time uh, to score some trailers? What month All is it? Time. This is the month of February. We are going into March. Yeah, we're, we're going to look fine. back okay. at the trailers from the past four weeks. We will be scoring the Conviction short film slash trailer from Neil Blomkamp for yeah. Anthem, the official trailer for Close to the Sun, and the remake reveal of The Legend of Zelda, Link's Awakening. Okay, kicking it off with Anthem. And I'm, I'm curious to have you here because you were excited for Anthem. You're a little lukewarm on Anthem now. Mm -hmm. But this is, of course, Trailer Jones. We are talking about trailers. We are not talking about Anthem. I've been playing a lot of Anthem. I'm about to finish my review. And so I thought I would have a little more frame of reference on this trailer. I, just, I literally thought about that today. I was like, oh, man, it's all going to come clear to me. And, like, I don't know who this woman is in the trailer. Like, I don't know. Uh, I know why they built the walls high. I know what the freelancers do. Like, I do know more about this world. But this is this is a curious project. So I want to start with you, Huber. Were you yeah. excited about this? Did you know he was working on it? I Were did, you yeah. curious? Okay. I was excited about it. I was gonna watch it before the game came out, but I just didn't have time. It came out like a day or two before, a couple days before, and I wanted to watch it for some context. Because um, I love Blomkamp. I love his I love his movies. His, his movies do have some problems. You know, Chappie mm -hmm. is. Not the best, but I'm still a right. big fan of District 9. and at least <laughs> Really good, which cool I rewatched recently and was still very impressed mm -hmm. by. So, Visually, which yeah. is why I think it's so exciting. He, which is why I think a lot of people potentially being like, whoa, Anthem Blomkamp, I can totally see that coming together. Exactly. This is just, you know, you know, rusty metal and, and people just trying as That's hard as they wheelhouse. can. <laughs> cobbling, cobbling together whatever tech is available. Yep. It definitely has that vibe. So yeah. it seems like a win-win. Totally. So I thought, yeah, I thought he was perfect. Like, I would be so down for him to make a full-fledged movie sure. mm -hmm. of Anthem, but this short didn't really do it for me for a couple reasons. One, because we don't really know what's going on, and two, uh, I feel like the strengths of the Javelins, especially for the, the purpose of, of cinema, is the movement and then flying around, mm -hmm. doing awesome stuff, rolling out of the way, doing cool barrel rolls and flying and things. And for a, you know a five minute thing, there's a couple shots of them far away flying, but like real good money shots of them flying and fighting is not not enough for me to like be so amazed by it. So what do you, what is what do you think is the benefit of live action, Brad? Like, is there any live action trailers that you've really enjoyed? Uh, I mean, it's just like a different perspective. I don't necessarily get hyped on something being live action. If anything, I'm usually a little more worried about it because it usually doesn't translate as well. Like <laughs> translating something from a video game you could do to CG to doing it like live action. It's gonna have CG stuff, but it, it, sometimes it looks a little goofy. <laughs> it looks a little goofy here sometimes. Yeah, I think my thing, um, my, my first concern about this is tell a very specific story. You're spending this much money, you're hiring actors to play characters that I don't recognize and I think actually might stand. I'm not even sure kind of time-wise where this takes place. Right. If this is maybe some DLC we have to look forward to or or some kind of story point. Again, I'm only level 27, I haven't got to 30. Maybe I meet this woman at 11.30, I don't know. Right. Maybe it is a character I've already met in the game, but just it's not very clearly established. And I think like you have this opportunity it, I should clearly think at the end of this, not, wow, that was so pretty, not, you know, boy, that guy sure seemed like he was in pain when he was crying. Mm -hmm. Like, whoa, that adds a whole new wrinkle to my perception of this world. Yeah. And Cause, yeah, cause, sadly, it does not do that at all. Because Blomkamp Studio, but it too. Is pretty Oats, pretty. <laughs> Oats Studio and Blomkamp specifically, like, he does a lot of shorts. Yeah. So I thought, if the, like you were saying, Jones, if this was a little more focused on a singular, singular character or singular like mission they were doing, I think it would have played a lot better. Cause this this is kind of like a, a sizzle reel, you know. It's kind of like an yeah. ad for yeah. the world. It's it's yeah, <laughs> and yeah, it just kind of it's, it's a resume kind of. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like the, the thing I shot in college. And obviously the budget is just out of control. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's just and, a little and, and out of. Out and of, they're out of we're the like we're almost there. You know, when he finds the red stone, whoa! You know, okay, I'm kind of into it. it. Rescues that girl. Like I think the most powerful shot is him coming down to the crowd and them all looking at him. Like the the the. 
I don't know, the, the starkness of their technology with, you know, it looks like you're somewhere in the Middle East, you know, it's just like, it's, so it, there is a lot of cool contrast, obviously, like, them mm -hmm. going down into this volcano at the end or this big swirling mist. We kind of approach all of these interesting concepts, but none of them really pay off. Mm -hmm. And it's not the kind of thing where it's like, well, you need to play the game to then really understand it. Yeah, so dude. I, uh, it makes it makes me sad. It's not something where I was like, oh, I knew this would be bad, or like you were saying before, it was like, oh, I, there's nothing Neil Blomkamp does that I like. It's like this seemed like well, it could work out so well. Yeah. There's also the confusion of uh, you look into the comments, and correct me if I'm wrong. I researched hard to try to figure this out if something else was coming. Like, is this it? Is mm -hmm. this because it says a trailer? So it's like, okay, yeah. is this a? Are we gonna get more of this? There's clearly teases at some story yeah. beats yeah, that Jones aren't fulfilled. Yeah, showed us, and, and so, the first thing I said was like, is this the trailer for the short that's coming? So all coming? the comments on YouTube were like, what? Like, what did, I, what did I watch? I don't understand yeah. of where this is being continued. So like yeah. not having that reference there or like need more answers, play the game. Just something where like, oh, okay, it, we're, it, we're done. You know, fiend, it it's over. It just feels like something that's completely standalone from the game, from a story perspective. Like, yeah. I don't know who this girl is. I'm at the last mission too, Joe. Like, in the saying, game. You've been playing this. It's I've right. been playing the game, and I have no it, yeah. idea what's going on yeah. in here. Like, none of this, like, stuff kind of happens in the game. Like, yeah, you fly around like that, but there's so much more that you're... Yeah. It's just not in the game. Is this, this like something that's gonna come later? Am I gonna see and, her later? But and I what? know we're gonna get comments where people are like, "How dare you!" Like that's clearly the city that they're alluding to the whole time. Yeah, there that kind of like looks eight, like the eight, one in the beginning. Eight, three, three, mark yeah. There are a lot of other cities that they mention that you never get to see. Yeah. that I know in the game, I haven't seen them so far. So th there might be subtle stuff in here. But again, you're spending this much money. I don't think this is the time to be subtle. I think this is the time maybe to have some teases at the beginning. What is this object? Who is this person? Yeah. What does this mean? You betrayed me. Like get you're all just, of that done in the first three minutes. Yes. And then have that. Last Last two be just revelation after revelation. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, I gotta play this because it is Bioware. Like that's it. I remember thinking like a month or two ago, like oh wait, the story in this could be fantastic. I don't know, like yeah. that could be the thing they bring to it, especially after Destiny. But mm -hmm. again, don't want to get into the game. Uh, time to write down our scores. We're changing things up on Trailer Jones. We're doing the scores before we rattle them off. I'm just gonna kind of do my last minute thoughts on this before I write my down. But um, it's one to ten, right? Yeah, uh, hundred point 10. scale. Hundred point scale, baby. Kay. Something point something. Um, yeah, I, 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 I was kind of, I didn't really feel anything when this was done and that's kind of what made me sad. Sure. And I'm actually kind of more moved by the story, which itself has its own issues in the game than I am for this trailer. Um, so I'm going to drop to a six. I feel bad, but it's just kind of, I, I hate to see this much effort done for something. Maybe they didn't give, you know, him a lot of information going into this. I don't know if he wrote right. it. I don't know if he just directed this and maybe had, you know, somebody from Bioware or EA write it. So, um. Yeah, so I'll go through six. But hand them over, gentlemen. From Brad, we got a seven. Let me t say why. This wow. trailer is super high budget. Yeah, it's goofy, but I am so surprised how much they put into, like, trying to sell some concept. Like, some stuff looks cool, like the giant, like the Colossus coming in, like, shit yeah. stuff's really awesome. Like, if there was more stuff, like, kind of revolving around that and some, like, characters I don't really know, right. I'm glad that they get to show the city, but some stuff looks goofy, like those ant dudes, like, they're just, like, clearly dudes in, like, suits and looks weird, like, but... Like, that stuff's cool. I just wish there was more of, like, the javelins, which is the coolest part of the whole game. Yeah. Without a doubt. Uh, Huber, not satisfied, coming with a 5.0 yeah, from just, Huber. Yeah, it just wasn't very good. No, I'm, I'm not offended at all. Right. Uh, yeah, it, you're just middle of the road about middle it. Middle of the road, no real feelings when it yeah. started or ended. Um, I would... Uh, uh, it, uh, five may seem harsh, but at the same time, in the back of my mind, I would love for him to get another crack at it. Like oh, yeah. whether they continue with more shorts, more focused shorts. Um, this I doubt a feature yeah. is going to happen anytime soon. This but. didn't damage Anthem for me. No, I no. agree with that. Yeah, yeah. it just kind of was there. Totally. Um, which uh, uh, a nice easy math. Thank you, gentlemen. With the seven, <laughs> the six, and the five, we end up yeah, we're not at a six point oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the average score for Anthem. Conviction from Neil Blomkamp. This is lead researcher Archer calling any survivors on this frequency. Is anyone out there? I repeat, this is lead researcher Archer calling for any survivors on this frequency. Is anyone... Rose? So, it's the end of February. It's a little light. I kind of like February, March, April. I like just the kind of slow ramp up to E3. We get big releases a couple a month, but just the industry kind of slows down. And this is where we can dig into some weird trailers. I'm looking at everything, a lot of launch trailers... A uh, lot of obviously big game announcements in, in your typical launch trailer, but like not a lot of information is exciting for me. Then this trailer comes along that uh, 
you know, I'm not necessarily like really strong on, but I knew neither of you have heard of this game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's kind of why I wanted to bring it. We don't get a chance to do that on Trailer Jones a lot. Just like no project, maybe not something that you're even going to play. Just complete first impressions. You just found out this existed 10 minutes ago. Yeah. What do you think, Brad Ellis? Um, I'm kind of interested in the game. It is like, it is looking like Bioshock 3 to me. But that's not necessarily a bad thing because I think Bioshock's good. I like that it gives you a cho uh, little chance to see the world, see what's going on. Yeah, it leaves a ton of mysteries. Like, I'm worried. Like, from what I've seen of this trailer and the story, it, like, screams to me the same exact plot of Bioshock when I'm going to somewhere and it's all screwed up and you don't know why kind of thing like that. But I I watched this trailer, Jones. I was like, oh, maybe I'll check that out, see more, more about it. Um, I'll tell you what really did the trick for me was the opening 10 seconds looking a lot like RPD. <laughs> oh, <laughs> giving, no. Giving me that RPD vibe in there. Uh, and then we transition into a Bioshock slash Prey vibe, mm -hmm. which is always good. You know, I'm always in the mentality of nothing, nothing in my life, nothing can be done too much, you know? So if something is drawing from Bioshock, that's not a criticism. That's cool. Bioshock's cool. Mm -hmm. I like it. Uh, and this trailer really, really portrayed or really conveyed the, the, what you are doing in this game. You know, you are going through a crazy area, solving puzzles, figuring out a sinister mystery. Uh, and there were, there were good environments as well, Jones. I really like the environments. Because uh, yeah. that's big for me in a game like this where you're exploring and solving puzzles is a place I want to play in. Mm -hmm. I think that's like the best compliment I can give this trailer is that it sells the game very well. I think yeah. this is the tri this is the correct type of trailer to do for this type of game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, show me the world, show me just little kind of snippets of discovering new areas. Uh, I think it looks well, it looks good enough to support that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I don't see like a ton of people on screen. It's mostly just kind of barren environments. Uh, there's not a, a focus on combat or anything. Mostly just looks like exploration and puzzle solving. Um, but I just think it's, you know, sometimes you see trailers that will have some big dun dun moment. They'll reveal something. And you're like, that eh, doesn't look that great. Mm -hmm. Or I'm sure I'll have fun playing this, but it's just not really achieving the effect that I think you want it to. And uh, I just don't think this this game really leans very heavily in any one direction. Uh, that's unwarranted. You know, I just don't think it's trying to sell itself. Um, it's it seems possibly like a game you know that I had not heard of yet. This is probably not something that's going to like jump out at a you know Xbox or Sony press conference. But I just think it's 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 aware of itself. Mm -hmm. But you were the first person uh, to mention Bioshock. You were when we watched it before, and I actually didn't. I think my brain thought that, but uh, I, think I don't Brad think Brad and I were on the same wavelength. I don't think I like yeah. really yeah, yeah, yeah. really focused on that <laughs> when I first watched it. I think it was focusing on Tesla actually more than anything because the thing about Bioshock is it's this made up character, this made up world. Um, whereas you say Tesla already, I'm like oh, okay, like I've played a lot of games where Tesla's involved, so um, you know that uh, wasn't that much of a surprise. Uh, what about one last thing? The gore um, is that kind of shock value for shock value's um, sake. I thought it had a kind of nice little like, edge to it. Yeah, it's just kind of showing like there's a dark side to this area. You're gonna yeah. go kind of thing. An adult game. Yeah, blood looked a little goofy though, so we'll see. It looked a little pink for me. <laughs> the blood. Yeah. Yeah. So like it just like it makes like a whole, like when to me if you get like the blood color wrong, it makes like a really intense situation not as intense and more comical to me. It kind of lessens the stakes for me. Spoken like a fan of gore. Oh yeah. yeah. Like if you're gonna do gore, I want it to like actually mean something to be impactful. Not just for the sake of blood for blood. So you yeah. see corpses on the ground riding on the wall, yeah. like does that do anything? That's like you know? that's like super like <laughs> typical kind of like oh, there's some messed up stuff going on in this town. Which is fine, but if the I haven't played the game so I don't know, but right. at first it's like just tiny bit concerning depends how much the game does. So when they only show like the wall writing thing I saw at least once in the trailer, so didn't sire me too much on it. And you know what would have really, really brought this home and sold it was something a little more threatening than uh, just this dude stabbing. Like, if there are more enemies, again, we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea of just a generic enemy, like yeah. stabbing a corpse, isn't very threatening. It's it's mm -hmm. conveying like, oh, this place is dangerous. But like. You know, Bioshock, you have Big, Big Daddy daddies. and yeah, stuff. Yeah. You have, like, <laughs> right. the in Bioshock Infinite, the giant bird. Like, if you had one yeah. specific, specific like, yeah. creature, if there might not be a specific yeah, creature they, in the they, game. They say, but, quote, and I like I like when a game has a directive. They say, we got to get off the ship. So you're mm -hmm. clearly like, oh, that's I'm just trying to get out of there. So yeah. I think like, the environment is kind of mostly what's, what's doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you have a shot like that where I'm far away and I'm looking at somebody brutalizing another human being, cut out immediately. Because imagine if you'd see him kind of, like, lean down and then... Mm -hmm. 
and you're like, oh, whoa. And like just enough to see a little splat of blood. And you're yeah. just like, whoa, what? Is, like what's going on there? Whereas if you actually see him stab like four times and then stop, yeah. you're like, well, it sucks yeah. to be that guy, I guess. Yeah. Like, I, like it doesn't seem like a scene where they were going to turn around and then attack us. Like maybe that guy's our friend. I don't know. Maybe they're defending him or, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe it's like a, a dream we're watching or something. But um yeah, it's it's a curveball, and I think it's uh, it's neat because I, I don't know anything about this game's development, so I, I love having the opportunity to really know nothing. Uh, we're going to talk about you know the Legend of Zelda next, and so like we have just all sorts of preconceived notions going into that discussion. So I wanted to shake it up with something like this. Um, let's write down your scores, gentlemen. I will right after you do, I will tell you my score, which mm. is a seven point two. Um, I um oh, oh I got you before you wrote it down, Brad. I was thinking okay. I had it okay. in my mind still. Okay, okay, but yeah, gotta, you be gotta watch my hand. I didn't like the last shot. I'll say that the um he's like uh, the character's on the ground and looking at notes or something, and then it's like something's to my left and there's nothing there, and then the trailer's yeah. over. It's like that's a weird shot. Something to I, I, again just you know really really take your time in my opinion with that last shot. Yeah, if you're actually gonna try to build up to something, but. Uh, Oh, scribbles and changes. See, this is what. Oh, see. No, I dropped the lead. I changed no, your mind. No, I know. I wasn't. It was honestly. I wasn't thinking about your score. I was thinking of like multiple things in my head this whole time. What I'd actually okay. settle on. And what did you settle? Sell on? Uh, or settle down, audience. Jones didn't influence it. <laughs> Giving a seven three. Uh, good trick. Like it got me interested in the game. That did some pretty generic stuff, but I liked the world it showed. It left me kind of wanting more. I want to see what's more going on in this world. Because they give you a few hints. There's some psycho stabbing people. There's like some weird fire people going on. I want to know more about that. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of excited for this, Jones. All right. Yeah. 7.5, same as Brad. Got me intrigued on the game. It's definitely on my radar now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I like... Like, these are the types of puzzle games I really like. Also, where there's some kind of threat. It's not just puzzles. You know, we don't see any combat or anything, so I assume it'll be a little more like Amnesia where maybe you're just kind of running and hiding, but mm -hmm. had that horror vibe uh, and just really cool environments that I want to explore. This time you're in the middle, Brad. 7.3, the average score. Yay. For the first time, we get a look at Close to the Sun. And now to wrap it up, nothing but good feelings, mm -hmm. nothing but happy vibes. And I know if you are a viewer of other works at Easy Allies, you, you might sense the, the dread approaching of like, wait, oh, please, you did reactions. You then talked about it on the podcast. This is inevitably going to come up on Friend Code. And here we are again for a fourth, if not fifth time, discussing uh, the fact that we are getting a brand new uh, Link's Awakening, a remake of the original game. So, we, so it is our challenge, gentlemen, right now. Mm -hmm. To put all of our preconceived notions, I mean, save a little bit of them in terms of trailer construction, of what this game was. I have not played Link's Awakening, I have actually. Oh. So. Awakening, I have. You have, you yeah. have another? Yeah. I have not. So you're the expert. You're yes. the Link's Awakening expert here at the table. It's been Brad. a long time, but yes. Uh, I just want to talk about this trailer. So, like, the interesting thing about this trailer is it's one of these, like, you know, double-sided coins. 50-50. Cutscene and gameplay almost exactly the same length, both of them. Mm -hmm. Um as someone who does not like cutscenes humor, <laughs> even though this is one is beautifully hand drawn. When you have gameplay yeah. after the cutscene, okay. I'm all for it. Uh, and and this, I, I mean, this, like, I'm not going to say this is gameplay, yeah. but this is definitely referencing the game. For sure. This cutscene doesn't come out of nowhere, and it was certainly fascinating to see Damiani. <gasps> Wait, you know, just, yeah. he, saw, mm -hmm. he saw, you know, like the rain and the waves, and like he knew it connected to him right away. Yeah. Did it connect to you, Brad? Were you like, <gasps> I will say, I was. I was when there was waves. I was like, hmm. Then I saw that <laughs> tiny little thing of the boat in the background. I was like, oh, it's Link's Awakening. I knew right after that. But Dominic beat me to the punch. Do you think you have to prove something with coming back with Link's Awakening? If you're Nintendo, are you so cocky? You're like, we we have enough people that are gonna love this. We don't necessarily need to like really, you know, do brain surgery I, when constructing <sighs> this trailer. Or should you just never take something like that for granted? I mean, I think it's just trailer one for them. So there's just giving you a brief idea. They're showing you everything that's familiar about Link's Awakening. The only thing I think is different that I recall is just the graphical style that I've seen so far but I haven't played it in a long time, but it's just like, hey man, you guys remember this game? Here it looks completely different remake, which is cool, but I'm hoping they are, they will show some newer stuff, Jones. I'm hoping, mm -hmm. I'm in the camp where I hope there's a few new things in the game. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty surprised because they did Link Between Worlds, yeah. you know, so I thought maybe that they would continue on with that uh, series, mm -hmm. or if this was like a Link's Awakening 2, again, I've never played Link's Awakening, so I have no context, but a one-for-one, remake mm -hmm. seems uh, very surprising. 
Uh, how, do you, how does that feel, especially coming off of Resident Evil 2, where you see something like this, where it's just very clear that it's yeah. going to be like Love, probably more mix. exactly, you know, you know, some some close up cutscenes, mm-hmm. uh, and obviously probably no separation when you're moving screens, like probably very little loading yeah. uh, going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, but Huber, you love having the gameplay at the end there, and actually yeah. a lot of people are very critical of the gameplay, like they mm-hmm. just hate, it's kind of like the first time I saw Wind Waker, and I was like, oh no, oh, like, for sure. you're just wondering, like, yeah, I hear the story's really great, but I don't know if I can really connect to this world with it being mm-hmm. so cartoony. Yeah. Uh, do you think that would have been a mistake to just do the the announcement with the cutscene in the beginning and then maybe wait like a I week? I love that they showed, the, anytime you show your game in motion on a reveal, I am all for it, I love it. I think there's naturally always gonna be a camp mm-hmm. of, uh, uh, people that just don't like cartoony graphics, um, so that that noise is going to be pretty loud. Um, but I, I love everything about this trailer. I love that they showed you know him on the the sailboat like crashing. It mm-hmm. just had this like eighties nineties anime vibe. You know, uh, love the hand drawn like just just the the visuals of that, and then showing so many little areas, little boss fights, enemies. I saw a Goomba in there. I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, I just like blew your mind. Yeah, yeah. I was like, why is there a Goomba there? Yeah. <laughs> now all the, uh, the the timeline memes are like even making more sense to me mm-hmm. with Damiani. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but also like, uh, it's a very, here's the issue that I'm having with this just personally, internally. Mm-hmm. Is it's just a very simple trailer construction, you know? Like yeah, yeah. this is a cutscene they had already created for the game itself. A great way to first show people the game, but like something will probably you boot the game up and that's the first thing that plays on your Switch. And then uh, a selection of, of gameplay that's it, that's neat that I think uh, develops in an interesting way. Obviously, they got Huber with the Goomba shot, like mm-hmm. showing just enough of that. Kind of ends strangely, like uh, it might be a boss fight. I don't know that big gelatinous thing he's fighting, fight. and mm-hmm. um, and then just kind of an abrupt boop, 2019, and we're mm-hmm. out. So. I think why I was it was hap- I was happy to see Damiani be so happy. I loved that this seems like a bigger announcement that you would normally see in kind of a random direct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think compared to last ones, I think it just made the direct really satisfying. But man, when I just do the math and I just think about like what sure. it takes to really put together sure, yeah. a crazy like compelling trailer. Jones, I think if it ended with like a shot of the cartoony graphics again, like the cutscene, I would have appreciated it a little bit that some, more. Uh, some other just big. I don't want to get remember, yeah. like Link looking out of Breath of the Wild, where like it ends with like a and huge, he goes like, the camera's yeah. panning back and you see that world. Just one last little would have bumped it up. Mm-hmm. Abo- uh, yeah, uh, uh, above a particular score, I want to have you write your scores down now because I think you know enough about you know this. What I you know what I love, where your though, are at. Jones. To counter your trailer construction, here's okay. what I love. I want to hear it. Is the cutscene plays the the anime style cutscene? <laughs> Sorry, I'm calling it anime. Uh, That's fine. It's the close animation cutscene plays. Then we get the title reveal. Yeah. Then gameplay, and I love that. It's like boom, Link's Awakening's back. Here you go. And then just the game speaks for itself. And it, it, it is plays. interesting that it's not called Remake or Plus or mm-hmm. Remastered or yeah. Re- Re-Envisioned. Well, done, it's just the it, old title. They did mm-hmm. a Game Boy Color version of the game called DX. So this is like <laughs> the third version of the game technically, I guess. Okay. You got scores down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going with a 7.8. All right. Wait, you know, I haven't put it down yet. Oh, Hubert, I tell you. Here, I'll go next. Okay. Wait, 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 yeah, just wait, just wait. I tried. Everybody, I tried. Sorry, it's, it's, you it's got slowly the, gonna roll the in. two wrong people to yeah. experiment on. He's hiding it. He's still thinking. Okay. I'm there's my seat, man. What is I'm it? Ready, I'm ready. Is it my turn? It eight, is now. Eight point seven. Ah. So not, well, I want to hear your reversing my score. Yeah. I, which, which, considering the fact you haven't written it down yet, I view it as like yeah. an insult. You know, it's like you took. You took my thing <laughs> and then just well, I was thinking like eight point eight or eight point nine, and and just kind of went down, back down to eight point seven. Um, yeah, <laughs> I I like to leave room for the 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 best trailers, uh, but I think it's pretty hard to to not only show a remake of such a revered game, but just showing the 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 gameplay like full blast on the reveal uh took guts in my mind mm-hmm. so it kind of pumped it up for me a little bit uh oh gave it an eight all right Flat eight baby That's... uh i really do like the intro of the cutscene with the the anime style i would anime say it's style. anime humor it's very anime. for sure showing it off on the boat classic scene from the beginning of the game 
waking up showing the title first yeah then when we actually see the gameplay it's such a rapid jump it catches you off surprise no matter what which i really appreciate mm -hmm. every time here i thought it was going to look completely different when they were going to show the gameplay actually here and i saw i was like whoa were you disappointed no. or no 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 i was like oh this looks cute nice <laughs> like i mean it, as a lifelong Zelda fan, Zelda's always doing different graphic styles yeah. all the time, so this is nothing new to me. Yeah. But I can totally see why people don't like it. And it's fine. I love, Brad, because you love Zelda as much as I love Resident Evil, I love when a franchise you love has multiple avenues and mm -hmm. multiple places. You know, we just had Breath of the Wild, this huge open world mm -hmm. thing, and now it's top-down, more mm -hmm. traditional style. I love that. But how is that conveyed in the trailer, Huber? We're getting into game discussion nah. here. You're yeah. taking my show away from me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's so easy, isn't it? It's tough. Yeah. Uh, it's tough not to get excited. And I think that, but see, that's why it's a 7.8 for me. It's like sure. when I think about the project, I get all sorts of excited. And I never played it, man. Mm -hmm. And like, I, I, there's a lot of Zelda games I missed. And so it's like, it's what a perfect opportunity to come back, yada, yada, yada. But what I actually think about like the trailer, you know, construction yeah. itself. I'm always a little nervous. As I get older, I'm always a little nervous when they just show a cutscene that I'm like, I in its entirety, mm -hmm. that I know is going to be in the game. Uh, I always try, I always try to remember, wait a minute. I mean, How much thought does that take? Yeah. <laughs> Just like, oh, show them the thing we made. Uh, what you I know. recollect, I wish they showed something a little different besides the graphic style. Like, it's been a long time since I've played this game, but everything looked very familiar from what I've seen. I was kind of hoping there would just be like a little... A little and something I get, more. I think you know what it is, Brad, that I just had this thought right now. You see the beginning, and it's, it's, it's turmoil. He's lost, yeah. you know, and you're really confused. Like, if you, say, you didn't play it, and you're really out of left field, you know, you're very young, and mm -hmm. you only play, like, two or three Zelda games, just the most recent ones. Oh, crazy, this new, you know, Link adventure. And then, like, your buddy, or you see the internet, they're like, no, no, this game came out, like, mm -hmm. you know, more than a decade ago. This can be really exciting to play this again. It's a weird tonal shift to just be like, he is out in the middle of nowhere, and then he crashes, and what's this place? And it's, it's no big deal, it's fine. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. He's just gonna run around, mm -hmm. he's got the tools to get the job done, not that dangerous, it's just gonna be a jolly time, I no think, big deal. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. I, I kinda want it to return to a little, maybe a little danger, a little intrigue yeah. Yeah. at the end. I'm you know, happy like they little, show little some stuff something. that makes it super unique, like the Goomba mm -hmm. and the Chain Chomp, because yeah. that caught like, like even just jumping like that yeah. Yeah, is crazy. Yeah. Like we haven't seen that since like Breath of the Wild pretty much. Yeah. Uh, Jones, the hard cut kind of thing, I'm kind of with you on. It's I wish it kind of just kind of weird. Added into something but a I, get, more. I get the vibe of, we'll be back. You know, yeah. you'll yeah. get, oh, you, yeah. you, you know, there's we'll some be time before this comes out. Yeah. It's yeah. 2019, we didn't say the date. Uh, you'll definitely see more E3. You know, please be excited. But I just for me, it's like, oh, blow it out. Come on. <laughs> the, uh, I love, too, that the animation is like from kind of the era that the game came out from. You know, it right. gives me that. Which Damiani old, illustrated. He brought up some old, yeah. you know, drawings from that game. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So, so you know, like I mean, a, Nintendo knows how to yeah. make their fans happy. There's no question. Uh, 8.2 is where all of that is going to. Great. Uh, just because of 8.7 over there. Twisting my score. Bumbling turning it up. Anything. Raising the average to an 8.2. And there are some other fun trailers that I watched and also possibly considered for discussion today uh, for good and bad reasons. Did you see the Apex Legends launch trailer? The actual trailer? No. We introducing the characters? Yeah, I love it. It goes from character I to character. I loved it. I did not, but we'll leave it right there. <laughs> I love it. I just thought it kind of dragged out the characters, which is way too much. Yeah. Because I played Apex and I was like, I'm glad that these characters aren't too in my face. You know, I'm just, yeah. I can enjoy this world. And then I yeah. watched the trailer and I'm like, here we go. <laughs> But I'm glad you're here yes. to offer. A lot of times when I rattle off these other trailers, people are just like, oh, okay. Whereas I like, that not trailer, only did you watch it, you have a dissenting opinion, yeah, and I'm here for it. it got me excited for the game, Jones. I was like, The oh, game got me excited for the game. I was so like, I oh, these yeah, characters are actually kind of cool. I was into it. Watch for yourself and decide. <laughs> uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 had a trailer uh, called The Replacer. You know these like live action jokey trailers they do? Yeah, like celebrities are shooting we, Are up. we past that? Yeah, you know what I, I mean? We like, were. well, for, for multiplayer, it's one thing just to see like Kobe Bryant with a rocket launcher for five seconds, but like, this is the guy, can't remember his name. He's in Bad Boys 2, he's in Transformers. Like he always, he's just this real crazy guy and he's got like, ah, oh, man, I can't remember. Yeah. It's terrible. I should have done the research beforehand. But um, see the slick back hair kind of. A goatee? lot of times, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the uh, and he like will either he, like a lot of times he's got a big crazy beard. Uh, yeah, he's okay. just this crazy character actor. Yeah. And like the trailer gets really oddly political and weird. It's just a, it's yeah. What? Sometimes their live action stuff can kind of be hit or miss. Hmm. Um, a lot of fun updates coming to Black Ops Four, but that trailer was a little weird. Uh, Rainbow Six Siege. This might be just uh, youtubecom slash game trailers catching up on these trailers that they missed. But like uh, they had like ten trailers in a row that was just people from their community, like really big, uh, e uh, not only like really professional like, mm -hmm. esports players, but like community contributors, people that do art for the game. Uh, and I thought that was really interesting. And they were like cool. super like it was like you know 4K 
Like, yeah. it, just, it was gorgeous looking cinematography. It looked like they were going to do a documentary on each of these people, but it was just little fun highlights. Cool. Uh, and Siege, I think, is largely successful because of its growing yeah. and really passionate yep. community. So cool to see them get a highlight. The Super Mario Maker 2 trailer was very jolly. Mm -hmm. And today, just today or maybe yesterday, last night, we got a brand new Detective Pikachu trailer. Oh. Have you seen that? No. Oh. It's I it's I, it's just great. I'm just I'm so I can't believe that my feelings about this movie uh, and uh, I I got a lot of really good laughs out of that trailer. It's but, gonna make um, a billion dollars. I think yeah I think it's gonna be huge. <laughs> new, new new poster came out. The yeah. poster super jolly. Lots of hidden Easter eggs on the poster. Yeah, and, that's cool. Uh, very fun advertising, but. Uh, uh, I love both of you. I love your dissenting opinions. Even though we got the scoring almost correct this time, we will be back in another month with a different panel to look at a whole other batch of trailers. Thanks for watching.